Hey guys, my name is Steve and welcome to AEAC Vlog. If you're new around here, that's cool, me too. This is actually a sister channel to my primary YouTube channel, the Aragon Exploration and Advancement channel, otherwise known as AEAC Home. Over there, you will get full in-depth product reviews as well as around the world event coverage pertaining to anything and everything Airgun. But this channel here is my opportunity to get in front of you guys, slow things down a little bit, and bring you in on some learning and discovery as I receive these products and make my way towards a full review of them over on AEAC Home. But this here is the Virau HW44 pistol. It is made in Germany, and it came to me by way of Air Guns of Arizona. Now I have to admit, I've been procrastinating on this review a little bit because I haven't been terribly excited because this is a 12 foot pound pistol. It's a pistol and it's in, one, in .177. And we here in the States are all quite spoiled on our overpowered and oversized everything. However, after having spent the day with it yesterday, I am now terribly excited. There's so many cool things to talk about in this gun and it was definitely an eye opener and a learning experience for me and I wanna share it with you guys. But before we get into that, let me give you a blanketing overview of the product itself, okay? Now it's just 19 inches long by itself without all of the accoutrement you see all over it. It weighs right about three pounds. Once I decked it out with the bipod and the scope and the mounts and I filled its little baby cylinder filled with air and even put a magazine in it that was all packed up in lead, tip the scales right about 4.8 pounds, okay? Now, this is not a cheapie, all right? These retail for about a thousand bucks, but at the same time, this is every bit as nicely made as far as fit, finish, quality, refinement, and performance as you're gonna get in the one to two thousand dollar air guns that are available on the market today. I believe AOA is selling them for right around 900 bucks. So this may not be for everyone, but I think a lot of you are probably gonna get as excited about it as I am, and it's probably a very good fit, okay? Now the gun is moderated from the factory, so it's terribly quiet. It does come with, uh, with sights and an adjustable rear sight, so you don't have to run the scope. You can keep it nice and light if you want to. There is weaver on the bottom and on the top for your scope, flashlight, bipod, laser beam, red dot, whatever the heck you want to put on these things. I know people really like to deck their pistols out uh, with variety. It is side lever cocking, okay? It is magazine fed. Byrock does give you two magazines. They're 10 shot each and .177. It, um, it's set up for right-handed shooters. So if you look at this grip, it is designed for a right-handed shooter. However, you can get these in left-handed versions as well for about $120 uh, upcharge, okay? The trigger is amazing, all right? Um, the trigger is set up for like a match event trigger. The owner's manual even refers to it as a match trigger, it's dual stage, it's insanely light, it is less than a pound. It's polymer, it's a really smooth polymer, so it's got a really nice feel on the finger. And um, in, in, in the owner's manual set, it doesn't give you instructions on how to adjust it, but the owner's manual says that it can be adjusted. That all having been said, I wouldn't fool with it, it is frigging perfect right out of the box. So what's it like to shoot? Well, it's different. And, it, and I raised an eyebrow to it yesterday. The, 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 the refinement like really surprised me. And um, let me just try to put this into words as best as I can. So for a guy like me that, that's very blessed and gets to review a lot of different air guns out there, um, a lot of the way in which they work tends to be similar. But this is a little bit different, okay? Now the cocking, this motion, all of this motion that, that you saw, maybe I should change it to like this so you can see it better. All of that does nothing, okay? It's this last little, like three quarters of an inch that cycles the magazine 
as well as Cox the gun. So that was a little bit different. All right, now the way that the magazine comes out is a little bit different, right? This little lever here on the side. I don't know if this was just me or if it's because I was laying down on the bench, but I kept wanting to push it, um, excuse me, down to release the magazine. I'm trained yesterday because I did this like 7,000 times yesterday in culling pellets, but you lift it up to release the magazine. And when you lift it up, you actually have to manually push the magazine out from the other, come on, the other side. And it's all very rigid and tight. And that's it. Now loading is the opposite. You lift this up. I keep wanting to push it down. You lift it up, take the magazine in, you just kind of push it in and it naturally just lines up itself. You don't have to do any indexing of it and, um, and you're good to go and you just go ahead and close, close, uh, close the trigger. All right, or excuse me, close the, uh, the cocking arm. But the other thing that kind of surprised me about it yesterday was not only how well it performed, and we'll get to that in just a second, but it's like, it's so refined and it's so delicate in its power output that it's kind of like playing a video game. Like I had it set up there, you know, on my bench and I was doing my thing. And as you can see, as I cock this, and this is on a full charge of air, I'll just like let it sit here. I'll do my little trigger thing. And there's no jump, there's no wiggle, there's no shimmy, there's just none of that. You know, the thing just kind of poop, poop, poop. And it just, it's just a very different experience. It wasn't what I was used to, but that, that delicate approach in this product by Viroc really kind of enhanced the fun with it. And I just felt like I was just kind of not having to put in any effort to poke a lot of holes down, you know, 25 yards down range. So what did I do with it yesterday? Did shot charts, um, the air reservoir, I couldn't find the capacity anywhere. It's, um, this is it right here. Air Guns of Arizona seems to think that it's about 50 cc's. It takes a 200 bar fill. Being that small and having such a low operating pressure, this is gonna be a phenomenal choice for you guys and gals that have hand pumps at home. Um, on one charge, if you fill it up to 200 bar and shoot it down to around 115 bar, I think the green manometer is going to tell you to stop at about 100 bar. It does. I got a pretty nice bell curve of about 35 shots with no point of impact change at 25 yards. You know, amongst its preferred pellets, extreme spreads were coming in around 35, maybe 38 feet per second across that whole chart. Um, I'm, I, you know, it's, it's, le it's at its peak, it's making about 13 foot pounds. Average across the 35 shots, it's making about 11, 12, 11-ish with an eight and a half grain, 12 with a 10 and a half grain. You know, that's kind of where you're at. And those pellets are striking the paper 25 yards down range at eight to nine foot pounds of energy. So I feel like I'm not sure if I wanna review it out to 50 in the final review, cause that may be a, an irresponsible thing to demonstrate for <laughs> y'all. Cause you know, someone's gonna maybe try to hunt with it out that far. But I believe like 25 yards and in, this is going to be a phenomenal plinker, paper puncher, and hunter for small game. Maybe you guys and gals that follow me from the United Kingdom who have more experience with a 177 and 12 foot pounds can comment as in the comments down below and let us all know how guns like this perform at 50 yards when it comes to taking rabbit and squirrel and some of these um, some of these smaller animals, maybe some of the invasive pest birds, these kinds of things. I'd be really curious to hear what y'all have to say about uh, about that and maybe I'll wait to see what you say there. And based on that, I'll just make my decision whether to you know, move it out to 50 in the final review. I want to, cause I feel like it'll do well as so long as the wind is reasonable. Cause you know, we are pushing eight and a half grain pellets to 800, no, 784 ish, somewhere in there. It pushes a 10 and a half grain to 720 ish. So it doesn't take much 
to, you know, to start blowing those pellets all over the place. Now, yesterday when I was doing my thing with it, it was very gusty. And at 25 yards, this sucker was pellet on pellet, like quarter inch to tic-tac size groups. I think one of them may have been just a tad over a quarter inch, you know, five shot groups amongst one, two, three, four, five, six different types of pellet. This thing is an H&N whore, man. This thing loves it some H&N pellets. I, I, it did do very well with the JSB 8.44. So I can't tell if Fire Rock, you know, used that pellet to develop its barrel around or used, you know, some of these H&N variants, but it loved the Barracuda. You know, it loved the Barracuda, um, the regular, the Hunter, it loved these brand new. I don't even know if these are on the market yet. H&N sent these to me directly from Germany. These are their new Barracuda FT or Field Target. It the, the shape is the same as the Barracuda, but it's lighter weight. It's a 9.57 grain. And if you read the packaging, it says that they're like hand selected and sorted down to like one quarter of 1% as far as weight. So it, yeah, it like these two. Um, I ran a boatload of pellets through this little guy. And um, it, you know, in my head, I'm always thinking, you know, lower powered pistols are gonna do great with wad cutter type pellets, but it didn't really care for any of them. I couldn't get the consistency out of it. I don't know if it was because the wind, I don't know if it's because we're velocities around eight, uh, you know, seven, eight, 900 feet per second, if it's too much. But then it kind of surprised me when I got to these H&N match rifle wad cutters. Wow, and I almost just spilled them all over the table. I don't know why this doesn't have a twisty cap like the rest of them, but it does have the nice raised embossed, you know, lid on it. It really liked these. It was making little um, clover leaf sized shapes down range. And it was just, it was just a very versatile, fun pistol. Now, this is the scope that Air Guns of Arizona sent me with the gun. And if I were to buy this, and what I would recommend to you is this is the right scope to own with this gun. It's a two by 20, so magnification is only two times. It's a little duplex reticle, but the size, shape, and price is appropriate to the rifle where it'll help keep the cost, the co the, yeah, the cost and the weight down. But um, me and having to cull all those different pellets, and I'm looking for differences that are sometimes as subtle as you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch on the group. I felt like I needed more magnification, so I threw on this old BSA Edge. I've had it for, geez, probably six, seven, maybe even eight, nine years now. So I don't even know if you can still get them. If you can, you can probably pick them up at some place like Pyramid. But um, magnification is two to seven. Um, I believe it's also a twenty. No, it's bigger. I don't know what it is. It's a 32, it's a two to seven by 32. And I set it to five X for, and it's a duplex reticle for all of my reviewing yesterday. And I'm gonna leave it there throughout the review because I know most pistol scopes that are of a good size and weight are probably two to four X. So I think I'm just gonna leave it right in there so I can give you all the best um, balance between what's actually a good fit for the product as far as everything you'd wanna do with it. But at the same time, I can, I can give you the true to life results as far as what the gun is actually capable of, uh, of doing. But um, filling is very, very quick and easy. Over here on this side, there's a little plug. You pull it out, okay? This is the proprietary probe that comes with, the, with it from Viroc. You just slide it in and uh, you fill. I've attached a little foster to it. And um, really, that's that. Other than that, I think, guys, I'm going to just leave it right there. I plan on um, shooting video tomorrow and the next day and probably working through my weekend to get the video made for you guys. So look for it then. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Hope that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, this has brightened your day a little bit. And I look forward to seeing you again, hopefully at the end of the week wind and weather permitting. Again, we've got some weather moving in, so um, timing is important and I'm gonna go.